as we noted, Palestinian officials say hundreds of people are dead following a strike on a Gaza hospital. Israel's military is denying responsibility, saying that their intelligence indicates a smaller Islamic group inside Gaza carried out the strike. This comes as, human as the humanitarian situation inside Gaza continues to spiral as civilians face the ongoing threat of strikes from the air and dwindling resources on the ground. President Biden is expected to meet with leaders in Jordan to address the humanitarian crisis as part of his visit to the region. But the Associated Press is reporting that Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas has pulled out of that meeting. NBC News has not yet confirmed that reporting. Health officials in Gaza, meanwhile, put out a, quote, urgent distress call for diesel earlier today, asking for anyone with gas to help keep hospitals going while they treat the sick and the injured. A few minutes ago, I spoke to a Gaza resident and outreach associate for Just Vision. That's an independent journalism and media organization. He's the author of this piece for The New York Times, lamenting the impact this war had had on his children and on all Palestinian children. Fadi managed to speak to us using what little electricity he has, and he gave me a raw perspective about what life is like in Gaza, including what he believes is the American willingness to look the other way as civilians die in this war. I started by asking him about what he experienced as bombs hit the Khan Yunus, the refugee camp where he lives, last night. Take a listen. In fact, the situation on the ground is very horrible. It's it's beyond our ability to afford this much of pain, especially when you are a father and you have three kids. It's very honest. It's beautiful, amazing kids suffering from at least the bombing and the sound of this bombing. I can't imagine how much other kids who are suffering from the bombing itself. Many witnesses told me that where why they are escaping and running in the streets. They were listening to voices of people who are under rebels asking for rescuing, rescuing them, but no one could help them to to save their life because the bombing was heavy over their neighborhoods. I I can't say that it's it's only in Canyon City. It's in every single meters of the Gaza Strip cities and then towns. In my neighborhood, we had at least three huge bombing entire families, entire families were being killed. No one survived this bombing. It's horrible, especially when the kids also, and also we are the elder people. He, that's entire families were being killed because there's only one, one, one rocket, just one rocket killed one entire, entire entire family. We don't know how to deal with it, especially that we are also under severe shortage of everything. Like I'm talking mm -hmm. about the water, the drink water, the, the food, the fuel, the internet, the connection, the, sig the signal, so that there are phones. We cannot be connected. I'm so lucky that I have two solar panels over my building that so I can charge my battery batteries to, to be connected usually I am disconnected before the midnight because the batteries run out before mm -hmm. getting the midnight. Now, it's horrible. We, yes. We, we, we can't get into Gaza, so uh, we, we're counting on people like you to be our eyes and ears. Talk to me about what you're hearing in Khan Yunus, which is in, in the south, from the displaced people who are arriving from the north. I mean, this, this sort of migration south in Gaza. What are you hearing from the people who are arriving where you are? Actually, I'm living in the um, uh, north south of uh, Gaza Strip, and sorry, in Khan Yunus city, in a place called Khan Yunus refugee camp. Uh, in in my neighborhood, only we have three Anarwa shelters, and, and it it hosted around seventy thousands of um, uh, displaced people. While these three shelters can maximum have not more 1,500 of displaced people. It's horrible. There's no water. Also in these shelters, I'm talking about the taking showers and, and drinking uh, water. Is, is There's shortage in it. There's no place to, to sleep. In these shelters also, women and kids are in the classroom because just to let you know that the, this shelter is, is on our school. So women and kids are staying in the classroom and they the the men and the elder men are staying in the yard of this school under the um, the hot sun and also in the north there is because there's still on our shelter in the north and Gaza city they are it was raining today so it was raining over there 
heads and the, 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 their cells. Um, I'm also from Gaza City, so I'm here as, as a displaced uh, family. I'm a refugee, uh, originally from a, a town it's called Beit Doras. We were evacuating in, in Nakbi War in 1948. But and to answer your question, the 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 um, the most noticed, the most important notice thing that I have been shared, like it's it's the way from Gaza City and the north while they are evacuating to um, the south of Gaza Strip. They were scared because they, they, they know that the uh, Israeli occupation will not um, hesitate to kill them while they are evacuating. Some of them, and actually it happened, they, 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 they targeted um, um, uh, a convey of uh, uh, these Israel, people. And Israel, it's disputes, so yeah. Israel disputes that. I, I want to ask you about... Um, our President Biden is on his. Of course, Israel. I'm sorry. I, of course, Israel would, would, would say that we are not. We didn't do that. Israel has has been killing us since 1948, and they never announced that they are the killer. But the fact on the streets and the ground, they are killing us. There is no one single day. I, 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 there is no one single day that Israel didn't kill us, a Palestinian, even in Gaza Strip or the the uh, the West Bank. I want to ask you about President Biden, who's on his way to the region right now. What would you want Americans, through the American president, to know about what your needs are? What influence do you think the American president would have on shaping this conflict, this crisis now in Gaza? I don't. I don't. I'm so sorry to say that I'm, I'm not I'm expecting any good thing from the U.S. President Biden, but I would say that I'm pleasing the American people who are the paying taxes to the government by these taxes, they are supporting Israel women that it's it's killing us. I'm calling the American people who are very emotional. I have been I was in, in US in March and I met for my first time and I met a lot, I, I would say tens or hundreds of American people. I, I I saw by my own eyes that they are very emotional people people that's a lot of them are in solidarity with the Palestinian people. I'm asking these these people who has a live heart to um, to go to the street to 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 to, to participate in the demonstration. We are following here in Gaza, even if we don't have electricity, but as 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 much as we can, we are following the news. Yesterday there was demonstration in DC and New York, New York Times. Thanks a lot to Jewish for Peace who organized an of course, in addition to another organization who organized this demonstration. This is the only thing that we can count and depend on. But for politician, Biden is giving the green light. He's giving the green light to the uh, Israeli occupation to kill us. He's sending a lot of weapons. We are being killed now by, this, by these weapons. It's, it's, by the way, just for your information, there's a strange weapon for the first time that we are being bombed by it. It hasn't a loud sound, and it has a very dark black color with a very weird um, uh, smell. I'm so scared if it's chemical or something like that, but I would say that this is the result of the unlimited support from the American administration to the Israeli genocide occupation government. All right, Fadi Abu Shamala with the perspective on the ground in Gaza. Thank you for joining us, and please stay safe. You are with them. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.